This is the Hagman and Hagman Report for today. It's January 3rd, 2013. I'm Doug Hagman, co-host along with my son Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. I, I'm trying to verify. Uh, I, I I do have a, a call in to Mr. Jim Garrow. Apparently, after appearing on our program, Mr. Garrow's car was tampered with. Somebody tampered with Mr. Garrow's car. I mean, sabotaged it. I, I don't have all the he facts. He should know better. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm kidding. It's sad to hear. I, I don't have all the facts. Um, he's all right. I mean, he's fine. He's fine. But it's, I don't know what what the deal is. I'm getting initial reports. He was on a radio show today and, and said uh, um, he, had, he said that they, they tried to kill him. Now this is after him being on our, our, our radio program on the first. And that, that's a lot different from uh, you know you told me that somebody messed with his car. Now he didn't. I, I just assumed I guess that it was vandalism. Not thinking uh, tampering with to to actually harm him. Uh, no, his, his words were, "They tried to kill me." Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, then that's not a joking matter. So uh, yeah, just let to let you know. I, I just wanted to reaffirm this that I'm trying to find out exactly what's going on with uh, with Jim Garrow with his car, and uh, get the facts and bring it to you. We'll have that information either on our website or uh, uh, Monday when we when you tune in. I guess where do we start here? Because we've got, by all estimates here, we've got unaccounted for nuclear devices from Dias, the uh, military base, Dias military base. We've got all sorts of problems, situations facing us. What's the most, well, what's the most relevant? What's the most pressing situation in your mind that uh, we're facing right now here in the United States of America and, and then expand it to on a global level. So none of us are safe. And by the way, do you think our enemies are not realizing what's going on in America? Uh, do you realize that Russian troops are uh, right now boots on the ground? Uh, Chinese troops are boots on the ground uh, in the country? Um, and do you think they're afraid of anything military from Mr. Obama? Not a bit. In fact, they're kind of laughing um, at us. Yeah, and we see, uh, as you said, the troops training on U.S. soil. We have uh, drills with uh, Russian special forces uh, you, two years in a row. We have the, the buildup of the Russian missiles along the EU lines. Uh, in response to our missile defense systems. And one thing I, I did hear in an interview uh, you give maybe a, a month ago, and this was on the the South Carolina loose nuke situation, and you had said some information in there that I've only heard a few other pe people give, the fact that the nuclear weapons that were illegally removed from the Air Force Base that were taken out into the ocean and detonated, and um, I got a piece of information similar to that, and the earthquake magnitude was a 4.2, I believe I was told, and I heard you say 4.5, but you had, I think you said 535 miles southeast off the coast of, of South Carolina is where they took uh, this. 560. When I first reported it, I was saying 200 because um, I was actually referring to the the uh, limit, you know, the 200-mile limit of, of U.S. territory uh, that we, we claim, you know, with Coast Guard ability. Um, but uh, it actually took place 560 miles southeast of Charleston, South Carolina, in the deep ocean. It was verified by none other than, none other than uh, Mr. Putin himself. He's the one who said that uh, if America is claiming that there's been a seismic event, uh, no, it was a nuclear device that was detonated. Uh, he's the one coming to my aid. <laughs> Were we almost uh, subjected to a nuclear false flag here in the States? Well, yes, um, very much, yeah. We were, um, in fact, two of the devices are still out there, uh, two of the nuclear uh, weapons. Um, uh, keep in mind, three people saved the United States, uh, two generals and, and an admiral. Uh, and what they had done is they put together the picture of what was going on. Uh, Mr. Obama asked for nuclear uh, devices to be moved inappropriately, uh, uh, breaching all the protocols, the safety protocols that have been in place for decades, 
um, of course, to keep everyone safe uh, and, and, of course, uh, safeguard the weapons themselves so that they wouldn't be stolen. So suddenly you have orders going out for uh, trigger mechanisms to be moved to three different locations, um, the actual nuclear warheads to be moved as well, the collars that would affix them to short-range missiles. That was the other thing that they were realizing. Wait a minute, these are... Are, these are going to places where if it's an 800-mile radius that these uh, rockets, uh, these missiles are able to, uh, to launch within um, and you're targeting within an 800-mile radius, um, wait a minute, that's the heartland of the United States. Something's wrong here. So they knew just by virtue of the orders that were being given around and coming back to them, you know, as people reported in, that uh, something was really, really out of whack with what Mr. Obama was doing, they put it together and uh, properly and, and uh, uh, stopped it. They basically said no. Now, they took a bullet. Their careers ended, of course, but they took a bullet for the American people. That's the stuff of Congressional Medal of Honor winners. Uh, that's the kind of uh, impact uh, for the saving of lives that is immeasurable. Um, if, if these devices had been allowed to go off, uh, these were EMP-capable devices. They were also uh, timed uh, in, in terms of what was going on with the switch of polarity of the sun uh, and the, the resident uh, Compton effect of, in the upper atmosphere. You would be dealing with a massive EMP um, electromagnetic pulse that would have wiped out all communications, uh, all transportation, all computer-related systems, all electrical grids. Uh, around the nation, the entire nation, and the, the lower part of Canada, uh, the populist area of Canada as well. So it, this, was, this was a major thing. These guys stepped up and said no, and they stopped it. And, uh, you know, I, I, we have to tip our hats to them and just say, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing uh, the brave thing that you did on behalf of the American people. Was, was this a plan, a plot, a scheme um, of Obama's own doing, or, or was this part of a larger conspiracy? I can't address that. Okay. You can't because you don't have the information, or you can't because of other issues? I can't address that. Okay. Period. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And, and uh, Forgive question. me for asking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you asked a very specific question that I cannot address. Okay, and I respect that. Um, all right, so, so when would this have taken place? Well, let me see how – okay, why? Why in the world would Obama and crew and company, even if he was working as a foreign agent, why would they want to do this uh, to – create a nuclear false flag event would it be because to me that would be just let's say step one of a multi-step plan would that be a safe assumption to make no it would have been a, a one of uh, this would have been uh, a devastating um, uh, development um, it would have resulted in b between a year and two years after this event would take place and remember this would happen in a nanosecond boom done uh, and it would uh, devastate all the systems, the food, everything, uh, to the point that within a year or two, 300 million Americans would die. You know, I'm going to say it again. We have a total of about 330, if you include all the illegals. We have so 300, 90 percent of the American population would have died after this event would have taken place. I, I'm going to recommend a book you read. It's called One Second after one second after read it it's a fiction but to my mind it's the best description of the struggle after an emp device goes off and stops all systems and when you see the struggle of these people in this book and you multiply it across the united states the whole of the united states and realize how devastating this could be and by the way it doesn't hurt buildings it doesn't hurt. Uh, you know, this is not a nuclear weapon going off um, to such a degree that it would devastate everything in its path. No, this is an electronic uh, pulse, uh, a magnetic pulse that would actually fry all systems, computer-related systems. So we're so dependent on computer-related systems that uh, all systems would crash and burn. 
Now, of course, people in, who have hardened systems with Faraday cages and, and other safeguards, you would have uh, uh, the ability to survive. Well, guess what? What did Mr. Obama do at the White House? Didn't he just dig a whole new bunker system and put in True. all sorts of Faraday caging? <laughs> and the answer yeah. to that is he did. Yeah. My father and I actually attended uh, one sec- the One Second After conference uh, in Buffalo, New York. We went up there and met the authors and were shown a presentation. And it was um, very eye-opening to see – and this was, what, four, four years ago now? And it was r- – yeah, the was... fix the fix this problem. It, they said it would take two or three years, and it would cost a little bit of money. Nothing outrageous, but from the time we attended the conference till now, they could have had this whole problem in America fixed to where. Mm-hmm. And what's uh, been fixed? Nothing. Right. Yep. And then you have to ask the question: Why? Um, the whole population is ready to be victimized, and of course, it was going to happen in early October, except for three brave gentlemen willing to give up their careers and say no to Mr. Obama. So we still, based on what you're saying and and based on everything that I've been able to come up with, we still have two nukes, nuclear weapons, unaccounted for, at least two. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's a a wonderful thing, by the way. Um, (laughs) That's always nice to have a chess piece that... uh, is floating out there, uh, ready to answer something that Mr. Obama might do. And who has it? He doesn't know. Uh, the good thing is he doesn't have the keys to the nuclear submarines. They're not in his possession right now. This is a very oh, nerve. Okay. Uh, we had a conversation with Dave Hodges. He was on our program uh, a week or two ago. And the issue came up about, who has the nuclear football? Does Obama have control of the, over the nuclear football itself or or not? Oh, yeah, that's always within uh, uh, easy walk uh, to him. It's always within uh, easy reach to him, yeah. Okay. Now, what are you referring to? You're referring to specifically the, the keys to the nuclear submarines? Is that something different? It, it's a figure of speech, but what I really mean is that the um, – the nukes that are in the Navy are, are not all under his control. Remember, we just had an admiral set off a nuclear device 560 miles southeast of Charleston. Isn't, isn't that a bit of a signal? Doesn't it tell you something about what's gone on with the Navy? In, indeed it does. And so that would so we're playing a high-level game of chicken here, or at least the when I say we, the the good guys in the military are paying are, are well they've got they've got insurance against what Obama might do is what you're saying is that correct? These three gentlemen provided us with some safety, with some recourse um, out of his control, out of Obama's control. This is a good thing. This you should not fear. This is a marvelous, marvelous maneuver. I'm, I'm tipping my hat all the way. I'm cheering. I've got my hand up in the air going, yeah, way to go, dudes. You've you done it right. I, I've given the the emphasis in terms of direction that I believe Mr. Obama will follow uh, because there's no other way for him to address a number of issues all at once. The EMP attack on America would have provided him with the all of the goods in one basket uh, where he would have addressed the global agenda of reduction of population, 300 million Americans. Uh, but this elite would, would come out of this thing um, unscathed with all of America uh, at their feet, ready to be grabbed, and basically stolen from those people who would die as a result of the CMP and the carnage afterwards. You know. But it has been forestalled. It hasn't been stopped forever he may attempt it again and that is my biggest worry is that uh, uh, we won this game um, so far but there are other innings still to play 